All right, diving right in, folks. We've got a listener request on deck all about vitamin D3. Oh, cool. Yeah, they want the lowdown on its benefits, especially, well, let's just say they're curious about those higher doses, like right. up to 10,000 units, you know. Ah, venturing into the higher dose territory. Interesting. Definitely. And they sent over some research, so we're going deep. But before we hit those 10,000 units, let's rewind a sec. Okay. Because one article, vitamin D, vitamin or hormone, well, it throws a curveball. Right, right. Is it even a vitamin? Exactly. That's the debate. It is a tricky one because we get it from food and sunshine, right? Yeah. Just like your classic vitamins. But, well, then it gets interesting. How so? Well, calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D, uh, it's more like a hormone in its action, traveling the bloodstream, regulating the whole shebang. Whoa, so it's like a, a conductor for the body? Yeah, you could say that. Okay, that's already more complex than I imagined. So... Besides the bone stuff, yep. what else is our vitamin hormone superstar effect? Yeah. Oh, that's where the real fun begins. See, it interacts with these receptors in your cells, directly messing with gene expression. And that throws open doors for, well, everything from immune function to heart health. And, oh, especially important as we age, muscle function. Uh, speaking of aging, this other article, the vitamin D hormone. A multitude of actions potentially influencing the physical function decline in older persons. That one, it jumped out at me. They mentioned how many people over 65 are actually deficient in vitamin D. Oh, it's a lot. Nearly half. And it's like a double whammy with age. Thinner skin, less production from the sun. And our organs, they get a little less responsive to it over time. Makes you wonder, right? It's like your body's own sunshine converter starts to, I don't know, get a little lazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. It makes me think about my grandma trying to get out of a chair. I mean, this article mentions muscle function specifically, so. Oh, there's a connection for sure. Vitamin D is part of the whole muscle growth and development party. Affects your muscle fiber types, how strong they are. Even some studies showing it helps with strength and balance, you know, potentially preventing falls. Oh, that's huge, especially for older adults. Yeah. But the article also mentions some back and forth in the research on vitamin D supplements for this. Why the mixed results? Well, for starters, vitamin D deficiency, like what does that even mean? There's no one size fits all definition. Hard to compare studies then, right? Yeah. yeah. Plus, some studies are short term, not enough to see the long game. And then there's, well, people. Sometimes yeah. they forget their supplements mm -hmm. and that throws a wrench in the data. So it's like a research puzzle then. What about the higher dose idea, like the 10,000 units our listener asked about? Getting to the good stuff. Some studies show promise, yeah, but others, especially with those mega doses once a year, they've actually found a higher risk of fractures. So it's not a straightforward, more is better situation. Wow. Okay. Definitely more nuanced than I thought. So for someone thinking about higher doses, what's the takeaway? Personalized approach. That's key. Age, diet, sunshine, health conditions, all those factor in. Talking to your doctor, getting those blood tests to check your levels, that's really essential. They can guide you, make sure it's safe, and, well, actually doing something for you. Makes sense. Okay, let's shift gears for a minute. Ah. This article, Relationship Between Vitamin D and Hormones, Important for Human Fertility and Reproductive Aged Women, caught my eye. Vitamin D and fertility. Didn't see that coming. Right. This study, they focused on healthy women, you know, reproductive age, and found a negative correlation between vitamin D and some key hormones like testosterone mm. and AMH, the anti-malarian hormone. Wait, testosterone, isn't that more of a, well, you know, a guy thing? Ah, but it's crucial for women too. Libido, energy levels, even bone health. It's a multitasker. Okay, fascinating. And AMH, I've heard that connected to fertility before. Yeah, it's produced by the cells around those developing eggs in the ovaries. Gives you a snapshot of a woman's ovarian reserve, basically how many eggs are left. So higher AMH, usually good news if you're trying to conceive. <laughs> Generally, yeah. And this study, it found lower vitamin D often went hand in hand with lower testosterone and AMH, which, well, it hints at a connection between vitamin D and reproductive health. Could be something there. Whoa, that's pretty thought provoking. Does that mean like if you're deficient, it directly impacts your chances of getting pregnant? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? We need more research. Can't jump to conclusions from one study. Right, right. Correlation and all that. But it definitely opens up a whole new avenue for exploration, that's doesn't it? For sure. So we've got vitamin D as a hormone, muscle mm -hmm. function, and now potentially fertility. It's like this vitamin's got its fingers in every pie. It's amazing, isn't it? The more we learn, the more we realize just how much vitamin D impacts our health in these unexpected ways. Totally. Okay, before we keep rolling, let's do a quick recap for everyone listening. First, 
we busted that myth about vitamin D just being a plain old vitamin. Right, more like a hormone affecting way more than just bones. Exactly. Then we talked about how crucial it is for older adults, you know, with the muscle function and all, how deficiency is super common in that age group and the potential benefits of supplements, but also that the research is, well, still in progress, especially with those higher doses. Definitely. Still so much to learn. And to round things out, we dug into that fascinating connection with female fertility. More research needed there, but it's a super interesting area to keep an eye on. For sure. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but stick with us. When we're back, we'll be diving even deeper into the world of vitamin D. You know, it's like peeling back the layers of an onion with vitamin D the more we learn. We start with bone health, then it's muscle function, and suddenly, bam, hormones and fertility. Totally. So speaking of peeling back layers, what about the flip side? We talked about the risks of high doses, but what happens when you just don't get enough H vitamin D? Ah, the deficiency dilemma. Yeah, well, if you're deficient for a long time, it can get serious. Rickets in kids where their bones don't develop right, or osteomalacia in adults, which basically means soft bones. Well, okay, those sound not good. What about milder cases? Like, are there subtler effects we might not even realize are related to vitamin D? Oh, absolutely. Even mild deficiency can drag you down. Fatigue, those achy muscles, and your immune system takes a hit. You're more likely to catch those pesky bugs going around. Hmm. Okay, so we know we need it, but besides popping pills, how do we boost those levels naturally? Well, there's the classic good old sunshine. UVB rays hit your skin and boom, vitamin D production kicks in. Soaking up some rays. Sounds nice, but isn't there the whole skin cancer risk with too much sun? Right, right. It's all about finding that sweet spot. Short bursts, maybe 10, 15 minutes on your arms and legs, a couple times a week without sunscreen. But no sunburns, please. Everything in moderation, right? Huh. What about food? Are there any vitamin D all-stars out there? Not as many as you'd think, unfortunately. Fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, tuna, they're good. Egg yolks, some mushrooms. But honestly, even if you're eating all the right stuff... It can be tough to hit those recommended levels through diet alone. So supplements, they become kind of essential then, especially for like older folks or people who don't get a lot of sun. But there are so many options out there. Oh, yeah. The supplement aisle can be a jungle. The main players are vitamin D2, also called ergocalciferol, and then D3, which is colcalciferol. D2 versus D3, any difference or is it just fancy names? Well, D3, that's what our bodies make naturally from sunlight. Some studies suggest it might be a bit more effective at raising those blood levels. But honestly, both are generally considered safe and effective when taken correctly. So classic talk to your doctor advice applies here. Always. They can help you figure out the type and dose that's right for you. Solid advice. You mentioned earlier how vitamin D interacts with receptors in our cells. Are there different types of those receptors? Oh, yeah, good question. The main one is the vitamin D receptor, VDR for short. And get this, it's everywhere. I mean, in cells all over your body, which makes sense considering vitamin D's got its hands in so many different processes. So it's like a lock and vitamin D is the key, unlocking specific actions within the cell. You got it. The VDR is a protein that binds to vitamin D, and then this whole complex can interact with your DNA, turning genes on or off. Whoa, that's pretty complex. <laughs> but it explains how it goes way beyond just bones affecting all these systems. And we're finding VDRs in the brain, heart, lungs, immune cells, you name it, even reproductive organs. Wow, vitamin D, the ultimate backstage pass. Anything else about the VDR we should know? Well, there are these tiny variations in the VDR gene called polymorphisms. Think of it like this. If the VDR is a lock and vitamin D is the key, polymorphisms are like slightly different key shapes. So some people might need a stronger key, a higher dose of vitamin D to get the same effect as someone with a different variation. Exactly. It's all about personalized needs right down to your genes. That's wild. Makes sense, though. OK, back to muscles for a sec. Specifically, how does deficiency play into that whole aging muscle thing? As we get older, muscles naturally lose strength and mass sarcopenia, it's called. And research suggests vitamin D deficiency might actually accelerate this process. So those aches and pains we blame on getting old, maybe it's partly low vitamin D. Could be. Vitamin D is all about muscle cell growth and repair. And if you're deficient, those processes get messed up, leading to weakness, fatigue, and oh yeah, greater risk of falls. And falls, that's a big deal, especially for older folks. 
Are some muscle fibers more affected by deficiency than others? You know, studies have shown that deficiency can actually shrink those type 2 eye muscle fibers, the fast twitch ones. Fast twitch, those sound important. What do they do? Those are the ones that give you those quick bursts of power. Walking, running, or, you know, reacting quickly to stop yourself from tripping. So not enough vitamin D, your muscles might not be able to keep up in those situations. Exactly. Less of those fast twitch fibers means slower reactions, less muscle power, and that increases the risk of falls and fractures. So like this whole domino effect, vitamin D deficiency, and bam, it sets off this chain reaction that can impact your entire health. Exactly. It really highlights the importance of catching that deficiency early on. Now, we talked about vitamin D and fertility for women. What about men? Does vitamin D play a role in their reproductive health too? There's growing evidence it might. Studies okay. have found a link between vitamin D levels and sperm quality. Higher vitamin D, healthier swimmers, you could say. Wow, so it's a factor for men as well. What's it doing exactly to boost those little guys? Well, researchers think it might be protecting those sperm cells from damage, helping them swim better, and even influencing testosterone production. It's amazing how this one nutrient impacts so many different things. Bone strength, muscle function, reproductive health for both men and women. It's like the ultimate multitasker. Right. It really shows how interconnected our bodies are and how important it is to look at health from a holistic perspective. Well said. Okay, before we wrap things up, there's one more area I'm curious about. The link between vitamin D and the immune system. Ah, yeah, that's a hot topic these days, especially after the pandemic put such a spotlight on immune health. Exactly. There's a lot of buzz about uh, vitamin D potentially boosting immunity, helping us fight off infections. What's the science behind that? Well, we're finding that vitamin D is a key player in regulating immune responses. It interacts with those immune cells, helps them identify and destroy invaders, and it helps keep inflammation in check. So if you've got enough vitamin D, could that actually make you less likely to get sick? Colds, flu, even those more serious infections. That's what researchers are trying to figure out. Studies have shown that folks with a vitamin D deficiency tend to be more prone to respiratory infections like pneumonia and the flu. Okay, that's pretty convincing. So should we all be loading up on vitamin D supplements to dodge those sniffles? Hold on. While the research is promising, we need more studies to be sure and to figure out what the right dose is for different people. So like a lot of things with vitamin D, it's a stay tuned situation. Yeah. But the evidence so far, it's definitely interesting. Oh, absolutely. It's an exciting time to be following this research as we uncover more and more about vitamin D's effects on human health. Couldn't agree more. This whole deep dive has been eye-opening, seeing how vitamin D impacts everything from our bones and muscles to hormones, immunity, even our genes. It's remarkable, isn't it? The more we learn, the more fascinating it becomes. Totally. You know, one last thought before we move on. We've talked about deficiency being a global issue, about supplements, but I'm wondering, what about the bigger picture? What's causing this widespread deficiency in the first place? Is there something we could be doing as a society to tackle that? That's a great point. Thinking yeah. about those underlying causes, right? Like, is it our modern lifestyle all this time indoors, away from the sun? Or could it be our diets with so many processed foods lacking those essential nutrients? Exactly. It, it feels like we need a more holistic approach. I agree. It's not just about individual choices, but about creating environments and systems that support good health. Love that. So to wrap up this vitamin D deep dive, I want to leave everyone listening with a thought-provoking question. Knowing what we know now, how can we shift our thinking and actions to make vitamin D a priority? Ooh, I like that. A call to action. Right. Could it be pushing for more time outdoors in schools and workplaces? Or advocating for food fortification to make those vitamin D-rich foods more accessible? Or maybe it's simply raising awareness and encouraging regular testing to catch deficiencies early. Those are great ideas. It highlights how we need a proactive, multifaceted approach. It's not just about popping pills. It's about creating a culture of health that values vitamin D. Absolutely. We encourage you all to keep learning about vitamin D and how it affects your health. And as always, talk to your doctor to figure out your individual needs and get personalized advice on supplementation. It really is amazing when you think about it that sunlight has such a huge impact on our health. Makes you wonder if maybe our modern lifestyles, you know, all the time we spend indoors, if that's part of why vitamin D deficiency is so common. It's an interesting thought for yeah. sure. Our ancestors, they were out in the sun all the time, just naturally soaking it up. And we've got these comfy lives now, but maybe we're missing out on that crucial vitamin D. It's like we've kind of engineered ourselves out of our natural vitamin D supply. 
So what's the sweet spot then? How much sun do we actually need to get the benefits without, you know, the skin damage? Well, there's no magic number, unfortunately. It's different for everyone, depends on your skin type, where you live, the time of year, even the time of day. But a good rule of thumb, aim for maybe 10, 15 minutes, a few times a week on your arms and legs without sunscreen. And always, always avoid those sunburns. Got it. 10, 15 minutes, a few times a week. Seems manageable. But what about those of us who, well, live in places where sunshine's a rare commodity, especially during winter? Are we just doomed to be deficient? Not at all. Sunshine is definitely the most natural way to boost those levels, but we've got other tools in the toolbox. Like we talked about, diet can help, and of course, supplements. Right, the fatty fish, egg yolks, mushrooms. But it sounds like supplements are often necessary, especially for certain folks. Absolutely. And when you're choosing a supplement, make sure it's a good quality one from a brand you trust and stick to those recommended doses. Good point. It's easy to think more is better, but that's not always the case, especially with supplements. You mentioned earlier about variations in that VDR gene, how they affect how our bodies use vitamin D. Could we one day see like personalized vitamin D recommendations based on our genes? I think it's definitely possible. As we learn more about genetics and personalized medicine, we might be able to figure out the exact right amount of vitamin D for each person based on their unique DNA. That's amazing. It's like a, a custom made vitamin D roadmap for better health. Well, I think we've covered a ton of ground today. We explored vitamin D as a hormone, its impact on muscles, fertility, immunity, even our genes. It's been quite a journey. It really has. It's been a pleasure diving into all this with you. And for everyone listening, keep learning about this incredible nutrient and how it affects your well-being. Don't hesitate to reach out to your healthcare provider to discuss your own needs and get that personalized advice. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. We'll be back soon with another fascinating topic to explore.